3D printing has made huge advancement over the past few years. What was one a limited and expensive technology is now made available for creators at home. So I printed this awesome octopus. Now, that same technology is being applied to one of the oldest and labor-intensive industry, the home construction industry. The home is not just being built, it's being printed. Inside the first 3D printed home in Arizona. This is a complete transformation in the way that we approach building. While there are still a lot of speculations or even skepticisms to the scalability of this technology, this research video will dive deep into answering the questions of can we actually rely on automation robot to build our future homes? Before we get into the printing technology, we have to talk about the problem first. And currently, the United States is going through a housing shortage crisis. We are short about 4 million homes in this country. Massive shortage of housing. What we have is real affordability crisis on all fronts. Home builders struggle to keep up the pace because of lack of quality tracement and rising material costs. This would then lead to less homes are ready to be bought. This same limited number of homes on the market are then creating record high prices. First time home buyers are then priced out and forced to continue to rent. This then will make it very difficult for renters to get on the property ladder at all. And what's more crucial to understand is that the housing shortage is not a coastal problem anymore. The reason of 3D home printing companies setting up shops all across the United States. So I traveled to Phoenix, Arizona to meet Jack and Russell, the founders of Diamond Age. Construction is a career path that has fallen out of favor with new tech savvy workers. When you don't have enough people to build the homes, you need to backfill that effort with automation. We're actually creating a new era of jobs that is attractive to the tech savvy worker. We have taken the home, deconstructed what a residential home needs to be in this country and applied design for manufacturing principles to the components of the home, which allows us to bring high levels of automation and robotics to the job site, taking away the dull, the dirty, and the dangerous work from our tradespeople. We take ideas from other industries and apply them in new and novel ways to home construction. It allows us to solve the problem more efficiently. It also allows us to build an intellectual property mode around the business initially. The company aims to reduce the home construction cycle time from a four to nine months down to just a 30 days period. And what's even more impressive is that they are doing this with an offset of about 55% of the manual labor that is typically required to build a new home. Diamond Age is currently working with a national home builder on an ambitious project in Eloy, Arizona, where they have set out to build 72 houses, which is essentially an entire neighborhood built off of that technology. I got a chance to visit those homes and experience the product they've built. So this is a Diamond Age home, recently completed here in Eloy, Arizona. What you'll see in a Diamond Age home is that it is familiar to the way homes are built today. It is not Diamond Age's intention to reinvent architectural styling of homes. What we're doing is reinventing the way homes get built. As you look around this home, it looks and feels just like the house you grew up in. You can put your hand up on the wall and it feels just like a gypsum knockdown finish because that's what it is. So one of the great advantages of Diamond Age homes is the composite wall system that we've designed and patented. The window sills are a little deeper. The doorways are a little bit wider. It basically provides thermos bottle-like quality to the exterior of the home. So here in Arizona, where it gets pretty darn hot in the summers, in a Diamond Age home, because we don't need to overcome heat, we are able to run smaller air conditioning units and maintain great quality of temperature in the home using less energy. Other companies in the 3D home building space are embracing the signature markings created by 3D printing process by incorporating it in their designs. Icon's 2,000 square foot House Zero project in Austin, Texas has left much of the 3D printed walls exposed, follow what Icon calls biophilic design principles that they claim to promote natural circulation routes throughout the home. While Icon isn't planning on scaling the production of this type of home anytime soon, the company plans on using this structure to present as a proof of work to partners, architects, organizations, developers, and showcase the future of home building. What could 3D home building look like in the future? Diamond Age Autonomous Building Technology aims to make the home more energy efficient and higher quality. 
But what if we take this technology and push it even further with the integration of alternative materials beyond concrete? A group of professors from the University of Virginia team up to not only create homes from soil that is cement-free, but also experimenting with growing plants on the same structure. Within the last four or five years, we started to look into 3D printing of concrete structures and other construction materials, and eventually led us to where we are today. Uh, it turns out that soil in its wet state behave very much like concrete in its wet state. When we're trying to extrude or print these two materials, we're actually able to use very similar techniques or printing techniques. So once we figured out, okay, soil could potentially be a replacement for concrete, right? And then now we are trying to grow plants on top of this soil. I mean, it is very much doing a double duty, right? So one is if you're able to change the base construction material so that it by itself it is something that's more carbon neutral. But on top of that, if the structure you're creating can further support and become a platform that supports plant growth, then you're doing more, right? These are the things that, you know, some of the goals that modern architecture uh, is proposed to, to want to, to achieve, right? So I think uh, having the entire structure achieve that purpose is sort of, uh, you know, one of the end goals for that. This is 3D printed soil from his lab. It was the first one he showed me. I don't know if you can hear this, but it, it's as hard as a rock. It was obviously going to be a challenge to come up with a material that would have properties you would need for structural integrity in order to build something, yet have the properties that it would need to support plant life. One of the interesting angles, I think, with plants is that a lot of times we use plants to control erosion. Well, it's because the root that gets in there acts like a net to tie the soil together better, to make them so they adhere to each other. There are studies that, out there that show that if you have plants with root systems, it increases the property, you know, the strength of the soil by 30 to 40 percent, which is quite significant. So there is a symbiotic relationship that one could create potentially with the plant and the soil system that sort of support each other. The one angle is that with 3D printing, uh, you could potentially have different layers that do different things, right? So you've seen this in, in 3D uh, concrete structure, they're not really making solid walls, right? They have walls and then in the middle is sort of this uh, serpentine type of pattern. There's a gap and then you can design that specific pattern to do various things. Now take a soil structure, right? And then on the outside wall, you could have a wall that has moisture. And then the inner wall becomes structural. Uh, it's something that actually holds the thing up. And maybe it's better controlled it's dry so that you don't have to worry about living in a damp house or having you know, little worms crawling out of your walls. Uh, so there are ways to sort of divide up different functions and make a structure that have different parts that serve different functions. So now that we finally got through the technical aspect of how this work, I want to know what are the next immediate applications we can use to put this technology to use. So the most ready application that I can think of is in landscape architecture. Right? So if you can create structures that you know you can put in a garden somewhere, right, that doubles both as the plant bed but also as some sort of a structure that's used to decorate the, the garden. The next closest one is of course residence, single family residence. These structures already exist, right? So adobe based structures are quite popular in the south of the United States, in New Mexico, in some parts of California. We're working with uh, Adobe based construction to, to try to test out some of these ideas. I think you know this this idea of using soil as a construction material, it's not new, but it's it's supposed to be sort of the home run, what can you say about using construction material that is 100% natural, 100% recyclable. Now, of course, to get to the point where this is actually realistic and you're building really useful structure out of it, there's still quite a bit to go. Could you potentially see this project or this idea come to fruition in the near future? You know, uh, we're not making a lot of new land. The human population is still growing. The need for housing is not going to stop in my lifetime or your lifetime. Decisions people make on how they develop the built environment are going to be critical for maintaining the ecosystem services that humans and everything else in the world needs. If our built environment can incorporate some of those ecosystem services, the rate at which we degrade the environment will at the very least slow down. You know, if you're looking for encouraging signs, you know, the past 15 or 20 years or so, I hope will be looked at in the future as a period of time where people realized they could be doing a lot more with 
the way they create their societies that results in a, in a more sustainable human environment. I think you put just the perfect amount of optimism and skepticism of uh, this project. <laughs>